Paul Powell interview. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. We're very pleased and honored today to have one of the most important and powerful political figures in the state of Illinois as our guest. I refer, of course, to the Speaker of the Illinois House, Mr. Paul Powell, from my town, Vienna, Illinois. Some people would mistakenly call it Vi Vienna, but it's really Vienna, the county seat of Johnson County. Uh, Mr. Powell, a lot of people, of course, have said that the Illinois legislature, which has went through uh, one regular session and one special session here in 1961 is kind of a do-nothing, confused operation, and very little of benefit to the people of Illinois was, was accomplished by that body. Now, this is your opportunity to uh, refute that, as I suspect you might well do. What's your answer to charges of that nature? Well, Dick, uh, in the short time that we're going to be on this program, it would not afford me an opportunity to refuted as you say but I certainly would take issue with anybody to make that statement I think in the last uh, regular session and also the special session which was concluded a short time ago that the legislature accomplished quite a bit the uh, for welfare we changed the Department of Welfare to the Department of Mental Health we're going to put uh, in construct more schools uh, for the mentally retarded we're going to increase the capacity for the mentally ill one of them will be located at Centralia and the other in Harrisburg, which is in my district. Centralia, of course, is in Southern Illinois. The others will be distributed throughout the state, central and northern part. Our highway system, our, our increase for school aid, higher education, consumers' fraud, to uh, take care of the people purchasing. And I under, uh, see in the paper where the Attorney General is now prosecuting some people and protecting the yes, public. Sorry and uh, our reapportionment in the special session and the uh, uh, money provided for the state and all. I, I, I just think that the General Assembly did a great job uh, in, in the special and also the regular session. Well, let's go back to the money provided for the state. Now, to most people, the sales tax is kind of an unpleasant, onerous burden that they have to pay every day. Uh, and it keeps going up steadily. What's the, what's the answer? And the Illinois legislature, as we all know, had to uh, add something on this year. Are they going to have to add something in 63? Is it going to go higher? I, <clears throat> I certainly hope not. The sales tax under our present revenue article is about the only way we have of producing money unless they would put the property tax back on. <laughs> now, a lot of people you are on a statewide property tax. A statewide tax. property tax. A lot of people are on the impression that we'd have to pass a law to put the property tax back on statewide. But that's not true. <clears throat> the state property tax is on the statute books of Illinois today, and all the governor, auditor, and treasurer would have to do would say, we need so much money to educate the children, and with a stroke of the pen, they can put the property tax back on. Henry Horner, when he was governor, he took the state property tax off and it has never been put back on, but it is on the statute books and can be put on if necessary. I hope that'll never come because the sales tax under our present revenue article <clears throat> is the only fair means of making everybody pay to run state government instead of just those that own property. Now in the uh, last session, in 59, we increased the sales tax a half cent that was earmarked for the education of the children. In the 72nd General Assembly under Governor Kerner, we had to put another half cent on to take care of the $66 million increase for the common school fund. That, that, no, I'm not including higher education and all of the other increased benefits. But the sales tax under the present revenue article is the only fair means, in my opinion, of making everybody pay their share to run state government. Some people would say it's not a fair tax, that the fair tax is the income tax. 
Well, that's uh, that's debatable, and and I'm not against uh, a certain kind of an income tax. If they would uh, have a graduated income tax, I think we're going to come to that point. <clears throat> well, I don't know, but uh, the people will have to decide. That's the good thing about our constitution; it cannot be changed without the people's vote. The General Assembly would have to adopt a resolution by two-thirds majority vote in the House and Senate, submit the resolution to the people. But my idea of an income tax would be a graduated income tax that people under 2500 would not have to pay any, and then over that they'd pay a, put a limitation on it so that we could not raise it over a certain amount. Like the federal income That's tax. That's right. And, and, then, and then it could never be increased unless the people with their own vote would give the General Assembly the right to do it. Then when you put on an income tax, abolish this property tax so that nobody would have to pay property tax. Right now, there's a lot of people that do not pay any property tax. And I take the position that if I pay mine, that you and everybody else should have to pay theirs. Because I know you're paying yours, but I just use that as an example. Right, okay. And uh, that's, my, that's my position on... And I believe if it were explained to the people that those that are now paying property tax would not be paying any more income tax then they're now paying property tax because everybody's going to have to pay. I, I believe it could be sold. And your Illinois Agricultural Association... Illinois Education Association, Labor, and the Congress t uh, Teachers, uh, Parent Teachers Association, they're, they all favor that type of an income mm -hmm. tax. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we're not going to have to face that problem, at least until 1963 anyway, but you referred to things that the people have to decide. Now, in actual fact, the legislature this year passed a judicial uh, reform article, which will appear on the November 62 ballot, right? That's right. We... Uh, adopted a judicial article, uh, they call it, it what is, it's, uh, it'll be submitted to the people and they'll have to adopt it in November of 62 for it to be effective. Are you in favor of this article? I voted for the resolution and uh, I'll, I'm in favor of it. I opposed uh, the other one that the, uh, some of the Bar Association leaders had in because they were depriving the people of their right to vote. And I, I told them I would never vote for any resolution that would deny the people the right to vote and to at least have a voice in the selection of their judges. Mm -hmm. Now, under this one, they still will vote to elect them, and after they're elected, then they'll run upon their record. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as a Chicago, and I know that you've been active in uh, the legislative struggles to provide some needed revenue for the Chicago Transit Authority, even though you live far, far from any CTA line. Uh, what's, the, what's the reason behind that? It's because that some of the legislators do not understand it and some of the constituents of theirs back home. I supported it because I believe in a fair shake for everybody. Under our present appropriation, we get $14,200,000 to transport the children downstate. The Chicago students do not receive one penny of state funds for transportation purposes to school. And they call it a subsidy to the CTA. Well, I don't care whether they ride the CTA or the Illinois Central Suburban Lines or whether they ride a mule to school. My argument is that they are entitled to participate the same as downstate. And if we get $14,200,000 downstate, I certainly feel that they're entitled to $3,150,000, which would be a, a reimbursement for them to help pay on the CTA because most of the school children ride the CTA. Mm -hmm. They pay 12 cents each way when they go to school. And this other would have brought the uh, price up to 24 cents for the CTA, which they charge you when you get on. I think you pay a quarter, That's or right. I would if I get on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I certainly am afraid if something's not done, that one of these sessions before long, that these Chicago legislators are gonna sit on their hands when our appropriation bill comes up for the transportation of children down school. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have time, I'd like to come back to some legislation. I would like to touch upon your own political background, if I could. Now, of course, you're the speaker. You're the speaker for the third time, I believe, this year in your life. But kind of where did it all begin? You have your own district. You're, you're a, a legislator from, I believe, eight counties in Southern Illinois. How did you get into this? Well, I, I, I got into it from uh, being a young kid back when my father used to run a drugstore and uh, I would watch him back there and talking and listening as a kid to 
talking politics, and then I ran for precinct commitment. Now serving uh, precinct commitment 38 years. Been a county chairman for now 16 years. Mm -hmm. And then I ran for mayor, and I think I got the big head uh, more when I was elected mayor than any office I've ever been elected to. But mayor anyhow, Vina. Mayor Vina. But anyhow, I ran on the platform I was going to put water uh, system in Vina, and I got it started while I was mayor. And we now got water that you can turn on in the faucet instead of going out the old well. And and uh, then I was elected uh, director of the school board where I served for six years. And just from that, why, then I had some of my friends encourage me to run for legislature in 1934, and I was elected, and that's how I've become interested in politics, but just starting from the grassroots. And I don't think any person can start at the top in politics. You've got to start at the bottom, because I've seen a lot of people try to start at the top, and they soon fall to the bottom because they've got no experience and they haven't served any apprenticeship in the, at the precinct level, because that's where the people are. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see as coming up in 63 as legislative issues? Well, in 63, I think we'll have the r revenue article. We, we've got to have it. Uh, our, our outmoded revenue article of 1870, uh, we're still uh, in the horse and buggy days, and I think we're going to have the revenue article up. That's going to be very important to take out the inequities to where people will uh, pay their just share, everybody, not just the property owners and certain ones and people sales tax. And uh, maybe under that we can eliminate the sales tax on food and clothing and medicine and necessities and uh, fix it to where we can change the property and maybe have a reclassification of property. That's going to be the important issue. Of course, uh, we've always got the uh, raising money for schools, public aid, uh, mental health, those are our problems. I think uh, yeah. is not also a 63 of the year in which the house is redistricted yeah, that's, that's, uh, according that, to population. That's, that's gonna right. Be that's going to be a I'm glad you brought that up. That's going to be a very uh, important issue because every 10 years we have to redistrict the House of Representatives, not the Senate. The Senate's frozen, mm -hmm. but the uh, House of Representatives will have to be redistricted on the basis of population. Do you think anything is going to have to be done about Illinois' economic position? I know there was some legislation enacted this year, industrial development authorities and so forth. We created, that's another, as far as Southern Illinois is concerned, of course what helps Southern Illinois is, helps Chicago and all part, because we are a part of the state. And whenever we progress down here and people make money, why well, it finally reaches its way to Chicago, because I know myself and other people from down here. We go to Chicago and we always spend a little money when we're up there and it all finally gets around and distributed and if we don't have it we can't spend it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that bill that was passed to create the uh, uh, economic development uh, or committee over here, office, located in Heron, I think they're doing a good job and under the governor while we're encouraging industry to come down here. Now we lost one plant down in uh, Marion but uh, I read in the papers where another one's coming in, so uh, it, it's going to be a great assistance, but we'll still have to have legislation to continue the, uh, to improve the economic situation in, in downstate. Maybe the final question of our interview, what's the most important quality needed in a Speaker of the Illinois House? Well, that's... That'd be real quick. Uh, th that means you've got to have plain old guts. Thank you very much, Mr. Powell. I appreciate it very much, your time and willingness to be on this program. Thank you, and goodbye.